The following is a walking conversation with Joel Salatin at Polyface Farm in Swope, Virginia. When Joel graciously offered to give me a private tour of his farm, I immediately took the opportunity. During the tour, we documented both video and audio. If you're listening to the audio only version, understand this was a walking conversation, not the sit down style we normally do. While the video was shot by me, an amateur at best, I still highly recommend watching the video version. Joel co-owns with his family Polyface Farm in Swope, Virginia. He's been featured in the New York Times bestseller Omnivore's Dilemma, an award-winning documentary, Food Inc. The farm services more than 5,000 families, 50 restaurants, 10 retail outlets, and a farmer's market with salad bar beef, pig grater pork, pastured poultry, and forestry products. When he's not on the road speaking, he's at home on the farm, keeping the calluses on his hands and dirt under his fingernails, mentoring young people, inspiring visitors, and promoting local regenerative food and farming systems. A frequent guest on radio programs and podcasts, such as the Joe Rogan Experience and London Real, he targets preppers, homesteaders, and foodies. Salatin's practical can-do solutions for sustainability offer everyone food for thought and plans for action. You are listening to the Co-Movement Gym Podcast, where we inspire people to move and live courageously. If you are enjoying this content, please support our sponsors in the description. I thank each and every one of you for being on this journey with us. Now, please enjoy the show. So this is uh, what, 600 acres? Uh, 950. 950. So 950 is open, yeah. and uh, 700 is woods, so okay. a lot of woods, and um, 300 was just purchased 18 months ago. Oh, no way. So, so and it borders your original. It borders, yeah. uh-huh. So we bought 100 acres uh, eight years ago, it joined us, and both of these were farmers that aged out, their kids didn't oh, want it, yep. and so... Um, so we bought the 100 acres eight years ago and then 300, well, 293, sure. uh, 18 months ago. And then that added to the original 550. Beautiful. That, uh, Molly did. So this, this, this is the, this is the 300 we just bought 18 months ago. Gotcha. So th this was the boundary here. Did you plan on that? You thought eventually that time would come to acquire that or was it, did that just fall? Yeah, we, we thought it would. We were very good friends. This is this is the only neighbor that thought we were smart. Okay. <laughs> and and he's the only neighbor. See, this th that property used to be a part of this one. Mm -hmm. It was broken up. There were five siblings in 1890 mm -hmm. and, and it got broken. So our neighbor to the north has two pieces. We have two pieces and this was the other piece. Yep. And so um, three brothers, uh, and the one house was already here. One brother built that house there. One brother built that house there. That house now is gone, the mm -hmm. one here. Mm -hmm. um, and so they were siblings. And so, well, sure, yeah, you can drive through me to get there. So this is a right of way. And so we've had for ever since we've been here, we've had this right of way right through the middle of us. Sure. Um, there's no house. There's no power. There's no mm -hmm. building. Mm -hmm. There's no nothing. Yep. It's just raw land. And, um, so that that made that made a better price because it wasn't very it wasn't real saleable Absolutely. you know due to all that. Did it have road frontage though? No, oh, no, no oh, road oh, no, so no it's road frontage. So it's, it's landlocked. Oh, yeah, perfect. No road frontage, yep. and and just getting power would have been fifty thousand dollars. Absolutely. So yep. um, so it was a, it was a perfect you know mate for us more than anybody else. Sure. And so we we met in the middle of a negotiated price. And we're, sure. We're all good. Yep. And. Um, yeah, but it has it, that has definitely, you know, changed our changed our situation a little bit. Oh, big time! And and it, it helped to square us off. Yes, yes. But, this, but this is the only neighbor who what I was getting at. He's the only neighbor who routinely drove up through us. Yes. The other neighbors don't. They see whatever they see from the road. Yeah, because they had an easement to get back. Right, there. right, sure. right. And um, so you know he. 
he more than anybody else. I mean, he's very conventional and didn't do what we do, but yep. he deeply appreciated over his lifetime watching watching uh, what what was going on here. Did he consider selling to anyone else or no? No, no, no. no. We, we we made sure we kept that friendship yep. uh, relationship sweet. Yep. And um, and he, he told us if his daughter didn't want it, he definitely wanted us to have it if that ever came to that. And it did. And we did. Yeah. <laughs> and see, they didn't. Yeah. In so, our area, up in Central New York, like I told you before, we just got the 127-acre piece yeah. there. Mm -hmm. um, but what's happening up there is, again, a lot of these small family farms are going out, like we've talked about on right. the podcast. Uh -huh. Yeah. And they're selling out to the mega farms, mm. you know, 2,000 cows, 1,000 cows, oh, uh -huh. um, all dairy, you know, conventional. Right. And they're paying, in our area, um, upwards of five to 6,000 an acre, those, those farms. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, here, because here, the, you know, land like this is, you know, uh, six or 7,000 an acre. Okay. Yeah, sure. That's what we pay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's... Just a few years ago, gosh, we were at 2,000, uh -huh. but we have four or five farms in my immediate area that are just fighting for land. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, yeah. we were... All, all it takes is two people. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so here are the cows in the Eggmobile. All right, so yeah, here's the Eggmobile here. Of course, it follows about four days behind the cows to uh, sanitize behind them with the fly larva, you know, the egret mm -hmm. on the rhino's nose. Mm -hmm. So the cows lead the way? Yeah. In the rotation. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, when the cows graze the vegetation, that of course exposes all the, you know, the grasshoppers and the crickets and all that stuff too. So the chickens, the chickens harvest all that. Sure. No, you're rotating. Which, but your... you can see as we come in, you can see there's no, there's no cow pies here. See? Yeah. Yep. They, they, uh, they take every one of them. Huh? Here's a. Now you're rotating the cows um, every day, right? What happened to that one? Boy, she hadn't. She just. She hadn't been dead long. No. I don't even see any blood on her. Huh? What happened to you, gal? Oh well. Okay, we'll take her out with us. Um, so you can see what they do to the cow pies. Yeah. I mean, they're just uh, non-existent. Now you're doing daily moves, right, with your yeah. cows? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So this moves every day as well. Yep. And yep. Um, and the chickens then go out. Go now, out how many out. cows per acre are you running for your daily moves, or do you not do acre paddocks, half acre paddocks? No. We, well, every, everything is everything is a different size. There's mm -hmm. no there's no such thing as a as a set size paddock mm -hmm. because um, every time you come through, you got a different different set of cows, different length of grass, different, you know, different uh, situations. Mm -hmm. So uh, the portable fence becomes your steering wheel accelerator and brake on that four legged pruner. Yep. And so you want that to be able to, you know, to flex and change with the, with the situation. Sure. And so like right now, uh, we've got about 85 in there and they're getting, uh, they're getting about three quarters of an acre a day. Okay. Uh, roughly okay. right now, just because we, we go up there and so there's okay. about 85 the here Yep. and they're getting about three quarters of an acre. Mm hmm we're going to go up to where this water's coming from. So realize we're way up here on this hill. Yep. And this water, you can hear the. Yes. Is that a sump pump in there? No, no. That's just that's just a full flow valve. Oh, okay. And that's gravity fed sure. from the pond. Yes, yes, it's yes. Higher than this. Yes. And so we have the most, the most unappreciated, unknown infrastructure we have on this place. Is our eight miles yes, of gravity I'm water? Yes, by that. Yes. Eight miles of gravity water. So there's a there's a water line that goes, and every hundred yards there's a there's a valve. Yep. Um, and along the edge of the fields, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so we can have water uh, anywhere we anywhere we want. Now this piping to go to these to the water troughs. Mm -hmm. 
underground, is it? Like you get yeah, yeah, the, the, the main yeah. line is underground. Yeah, yeah. This is above. This is yep. just to go to the trough. But yeah, the main the main lines are uh, buried underground. Sure. Yeah. Yep. yep. Okay, yep. that's what we're trying to figure out now with our piece mm -hmm. is we have a drilled well there, great uh -huh. water flow, good setup. Uh -huh. But I've got to do the excavation to get water sites, like you mentioned in your email to me. Having water is mm -hmm. like pr obviously primary. Yep. We haven't done that yet. Yeah, yeah. You know, but we don't want any stationary waterers. We we want to move the water around sure. because that's that's how we you know we we don't want to put it here because. Right now, this time they're putting manure and impaction right here. Next time we want to put it over here, mm -hmm. over there. You mm -hmm. know, you, you want it, you want to move it around mm -hmm. uh, as much, or you know, bring it on up here next time or whatever. Sure, uh, but sure. you move it around. Um, I want you to look at how slick and fat those guys are. They're beautiful. That's a, that's a, that's as pretty a that's as pretty a group of cows as you'll see. And happy. And happy. Yeah, yeah. Doing exactly as nature is intending yeah yep. that's what they're supposed to do amazing so how old are these guys so these are all in the 30 month range so mm -hmm. this is this is kind of a finisher herd uh so these guys are you know we're pulling out every two weeks we're pulling out a dozen and go to slaughter mm -hmm. um and and so so we you know we we can we can finish anywhere from you know 28 to 33 months or so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um one of the biggest mistakes that grass finished people make is they don't they don't wait long enough till they get intramuscular fat. Sure. And uh, so you're saying they're sending them too soon. Too soon. Like 24, soon. 22. Yeah, yep. 22 months, 20. You know, and and they're just they're just not. They're still making bone and bone and and hide and sinew. Sure, sure. And they're not and they're not making that intramuscular fat. Yep. And uh, so you have to you have to give them some time to mm -hmm. to get there. Mm -hmm. Um. But you know they will they will definitely you know fill up and flesh out and get uh, you know when you see that that tail head the little um, and she moves her tail around see see the little the little uh, see how the little crinkles in her tail yeah. there mm -hmm. yeah that that indicates her her you know the, the fatness oh no way really mm -hmm. huh. yeah you want to you want to see those little crinkles okay um, in the tail head. So they're going to get moved tonight or tomorrow? Um, I just moved them a little while ago. Okay. Yep. Um, actually, actually, I mean, this is a good example of why you never want stationary fences. Is um, Tuesday we moved a herd from one of the rental farms, and uh, this herd had gotten down to like 60 or 55 or 60, mm -hmm. I guess. And uh, so Daniel pulled out 24 more big ones to bring them home um, because we tend to go to the slaughterhouse from here. I mean, mm -hmm. this is where we have... Uh, we're here. We've got corral. We've got you know good loading situation. So anyway, um, so we we went from here. Uh, so he, he just brought 24. Well, I had already set up a couple of days in advance, and he dumped 24 here. Well, when it goes from <laughs> goes from 60 to 84, that's a big. That's like a sure. like a 20 percent increase. Sure. And so uh, today they they. Um, they they were they were ready to go sure. and uh, and we can walk up there I can show you. Um, so you, the the portable fencing um you have do you have no permanent fencing then here? Yeah yeah all the permanents are that all that down there is permanent. Okay so okay the, the, per, the permanent defines the field. Yes and okay. then and then the tent the the portable simply. I like to I like to talk about it like the the rungs on a ladder. Mm -hmm. So that's the stringers of the ladder that's permanent. Yes. And then the, this is the rungs, and they they can adjust to to whatever you need. For sure, for sure. And, okay. And, and so that's kind of the way I I view it. Yep. And that's what we're looking at now with our with our new property mm -hmm. is putting that exterior fencing up. Right. And right. and then obviously we're going to run the portable on the interior. Right. Um. Right. Okay. Well, our rule of thumb is our rule of thumb is. That if you're new and this is new and you're not sure what to do, mm -hmm. don't do anything, don't do anything permanent for three years. And what you haven't moved in three years, make permanent. Okay, so so, so, so you let, on so that. let function drive form. Okay. Yeah, because you know people tend to, you know, tend to. Uh, you know, I've, I've got these ideas and the next thing you know, guess what? The gate's not in the right place. The, you know, oh, if I'd have moved it over here just a little bit, whatever. Sure, sure. So, so I want you to appreciate 
I want you to appreciate that yesterday, so here's, here's where they were um, yesterday, and oh wow, this looked just like that 24 hours ago. Unreal. I want people to see that. So I, I want you to I want you to I want you to appreciate what what they've eaten here. This is cockle, mm -hmm. inedible. Cows don't eat cockle. They won't mm -hmm. eat cockle. Okay, mm -hmm. um, that's cockle. Look look at these look at these uh, uh, thistle thistle. They nipped off all the thistle blossoms. Okay, yep. cows don't eat thistle. We know cows don't eat thistle. What do you mean cows eat that? Though cows don't eat thistles. Um, but, so, but but so they, they're they're eating things that we're told they don't. Yes. That okay. That's, yeah. And, and so so that is part of this this um, where you go to mob mob grazing. Yep. Um, they end up eating with more reckless abandon. Sure. Sure. And then because they're eating with reckless abandon, they're actually eating more diversified uh, material, yep. which then gives them a more diversified mineral vitamin enzyme complex which then gives us diversity in our microbiome yes one of the one of the quickest ways to uh, diversify your microbiome and we all know how important that is mm -hmm. one of the quickest ways to diversify your microbiome is to eat pastured uh animals eggs mm -hmm. uh, th that are getting all this diversity out here sure sure and 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 bringing that into their into their uh, versus just corn soy grain exactly right? yeah exactly for sure and and even versus trying to diversify your diet to that point absolutely uh finding you know uh obscure vegetables or mm -hmm. obscure mm -hmm. if you're mm -hmm. how to cook them or mm -hmm. whatever yep uh just just get an egg from a chicken that's had you know 25 different kinds of plants yeah you know, and, in the last week and they're doing more and more uh studies on this in articles in yeah. regards to the nutritional profile yeah. yeah um and how much more of a bang for your buck you're getting with what you're raising and right. how you're raising it versus mm -hmm. you know the conventional way i really i want to highlight this here so this is not grazed yeah yeah it's pretty it's pretty dramatic it's very dramatic, and then <laughs> so you, the, and then the just, lawnmowers you can, come you through. You can just see that you can just uh, uh, you know see there where the where the fence line goes. You know I can uh, I can go down here and whack this uh, this thistle just so you get a better you get a better uh, better understanding of it. This is kind of you know getting in the way, but anyway, yeah. But if you if you just show that now now notice here, look at this. This is all earthworm castings. Look at that. Unreal. That that whole soil mm -hmm. is just look look at that top of that soil. See that's that's just all earthworm. That's brand new, brand new soil mm -hmm. with great big worm holes going down through it. And that's an indicator of extremely healthy soil. Yeah, absolutely. Now, what did you say was it sixty earthworms per square? foot or cubic foot or what was the uh well uh, uh you know it's something something like 20 20 earthworms per cubic foot okay. you know churns i mean it's thousands of pounds sure. uh, per acre but yeah um you know the whole the whole deal here is we want worms yes you know yes um because the worms are the worms are are the, the soil builders i mean look, look at this look at this weed here look at what they've done to that they've i mean they've stripped that stripped that right down how about goldenrod uh, yeah, that? when it yeah when it's when it's uh, when it's young and tender, yep. almost all weeds have a have a a, a window of palatability. Mm -hmm. um, like like this cockle, uh, it's starting to get to where they don't want it. When it's real young and tender, they'll eat it. Ragweed, ragweed, they'll eat ragweed just fine when it's young. Mm -hmm. As it gets old, they won't. So so a lot of this is a timing issue, uh, which is why. You want to come to different fields each year at different times, sure. Um, so that so that you're you're uh, touch touching the different plants at different at, at different uh, you know physiological maturities. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know at different times from year to year. Mm -hmm. So if someone bought a piece of land or is going to be buying a piece of land and it's not in the best of shape, mm -hmm. uh, which is pretty common, yeah. um, the best thing that they can be doing is 
um, essentially mob grazing with cows. Yes. Chickens follow a few days later. Yeah. And yeah. because that, me and you talked on email about that, the mm -hmm. land that we have is probably, gosh, a third goldenrod. Mm -hmm. And then we have, you know, um, you know, yeah. thorn berries and like, you know, it's just yeah. not healthy oh, yeah. right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I'm very, very uh, optimistic mm -hmm. that getting cows on there is going to turn that around. Oh, yeah, it is. So what I want to show you here is so the cows were in here, what, three days ago. Mm -hmm. And right here is where they grazed that that orchard grass right there. See that? See the, the broken? Yep. So in three days, this is the new shoot oh, wow. coming up Shit. out of that sheath. Are yep. you with me? Yep. Just okay. In three days. In th that's three days. And it, and this is this is August. You know, this is mm -hmm. not growing. No, no. In, in May, it would be even more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the point is that uh, the, the reason that we move them every day is because that right there, if they were in here, they would want to eat that again. Sure. Because sure. that's, that's real tender. But that would weaken the plant mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because the plant, the plant is is taking carbohydrates from the roots, from its savings account to send forth this shoot. Not until this shoot gets up in here does it actually get enough solar panel to start replacing the energy in the in the roots that was expended mm -hmm. in sending it forth. Mm -hmm. uh, Voisine called that the law of the second bite. Mm -hmm. So um, so that's why that's why. Uh, that's one of the reasons why we move them every day in order to to make sure that they never can re-nip this before the plant gets back to energy equilibrium. Yeah, that's a great, that's very interesting because I see overgrazed fields. Oh, yeah. All oh, yeah. the time. Oh, yeah. Everywhere. And yeah. then what happens is just, it just comes back full out with weeds and briars. Right. right. And, right. and then they're still grazing it. Yeah. And okay, yep. so that's a good that's a good point there. Mm -hmm. huh. Well, it's just it's just good to see it once in a while, so you can really sure. get your head around what what is you know what what's the deal here. What sure. Feel free to ask any questions. I'm I'm just kind of gonna no that was a take huge... you on a, on a quick little run around. That, that was I took away a few amazing things right there for sure. Yeah, that's, and there are people, a lot of them, they're becoming more and more awake with the importance of this and not just from the, let's say, animal welfare standpoint mm -hmm. or any one perspective. Right. It's all holistic. Yeah, yeah. All, yeah. all one process. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So all of this up here was forest. These are conversions. Lots of times you have you know, forestal encroachments yep. uh, around neglected fields. Mm -hmm. And so this is only the second year on this little acre right here. We just did that one. And uh, we, we don't bulldoze it. We don't, you know, we don't tear it all up. We just, we just cut it with a chainsaw, chip the stuff, cut the, cut the stumps way down low, bevel the edge of the stump so you can drive over it and, um, and feed some hay on it, get some grass seed in there and boom, you got a pasture. So this was woods right here. That was woods. Uh, uh, in the winter of 2021. Okay. So wow. So this is only the second year. Sure. As pasture. Is oh, that wow. locust in there? Locust and ash. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's yeah, there's all sorts. Of, there's a lot of oak and poplar in there. Well, I cut a bunch of locust trees um, this past summer, and uh -huh. that is harder than ever to cut. Well, yeah, yeah. That, that's what we make posts out yeah. of. Yeah. Yeah. No, locust is. If you've got locust, you're you're really blessed. A lot of people in the country don't have it. And, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you, you can make posts out of Osage orange, um, you know, uh, red cedar, but boy, locust is locust is hard to beat because it grows nice and straight. Yep. Doesn't have so many limbs on it. It's just a wonderful, wonderful tree. Hey piggles. Hey piggles. How are you? Hmm? So these are roughly half acre pig pastures. The pigs get rotated every five to 12 days. So they get all the, they get all the salad bar they want. Plus of course they have their GMO free feed. Yep. And um, if you come up here again, you can again, see where they, so they've been here for about a week, I guess now, 
And so a week ago, this looked just like that. <laughs> and in a couple of days, they're going to go into that. Uh-huh. So look at that. It's really cool to just see the time warp, you know. Absolutely. Um, so this two strands is enough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. So the key to pigs, the key to, and, and, and notice how the pigs berm it up. Yep. They actually berm it up and that eliminates erosion. They actually protect their own, you know, environment from erosion that way. It makes it like a rice paddy. Um, so the thing about a pig is they're the smartest of all the farm animals, mm -hmm. but they have the worst eyesight. Okay. So they're the hardest animals to build trust with. Um, because they, you know, they're, they, they're not sure, they can't see what you're doing very well, and they're not, they don't know what you're doing very well, okay? <laughs> and um, so, so for the pigs, um, you, the, the, the electric fence has to be very visible. Mm -hmm. And that's problematic for a pig because it has to be real low. So it's down close to the ground where grass grows, you know, stuff grows up. So we spend a lot of time uh, weed eating. Sure. Just to, to, to make them, but they you, you can't blame the pig for going through something he can't see. Sure. So so the wire has to be visible. It has to be the right height. Um, uh, if you make it too high, the pig will go on it. Make it too low, they'll go over it. It has to be the right height. It has to be, so it has to be tight. Mm -hmm. uh, not tight like a piano wire, but, you know, uh, pretty tight. Mm -hmm. And um, and then it has to have about, you know, 4,000 volts in it. So it's got to be a good good hot spark. And um, so if, you know, if, if it's tight, the right height, visible, and the spark is good, um, the, the pigs are, they, they respect it Jeez. Uh, fantastically. And that's only a foot off the ground. Yeah. Yeah. Well, look, have, look where their noses have, are. Yeah, their noses no. are, you Absolutely. Know, you, you, you want it to be about where their noses are. Huh. <laughs> now, how, um, how long do you grow these? Eight okay. Months, Ten months. Uh, well, we get them. We get them at about two months. Okay. As as you know, wiener as wiener pigs. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't farrow. Um, the main reason we don't farrow is because we get fifteen thousand visitors a year, sure. and there's nothing as attractive as a sow nursing piglets, <laughs> but nothing as deadly as a sow nursing piglets if you happen to disturb one of the piglets. Sure. And so you know we don't need. Um, you know, uh, urban soccer mom who's, who's, <laughs> who's looking at her, you know, uh, smartphone and her three-year-old climbs the gate, goes into the pig pen next morning, you know, front page of the paper, local, yeah. you know, you know three, three-year-old toddler eaten by sow at local farm. <laughs> so, so we, we buy our piggies from farmers who, who tend to not have visitors. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so we, they come in at two months and then we keep them for about six. Okay. Yep. So they're so about eight, eight months, months when they're, when they're done. Yep. Yep. Oh, you piggles, you guys are something. Chewing on my shoes. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. All right. So you said this is a four to five day rotation? Right? Uh, five to 12. Oh, five to 12. Five to 12. Here. Okay. We're trying to never leave them in a place more than 12 days. Sure. So this is the water here. So this again, this is gravity. It's coming from a high pond up there. Mm -hmm. And this is just on a float valve. Mm -hmm. That just turns off and on with the mm -hmm. water mm -hmm. level. And so no electricity is needed. No electricity. That, that, that you want to and talk no about, pumps. you just no talk pump. about resilience. Yeah. I, no no, I no love electricity, that. I love no pump. <laughs> yeah. Oh, people pickle. getting scared, you know, about the, the power yeah. grid and weird yeah, yeah. things going on. Watch this. It's not going to make a difference if you have something like this. Come here. <laughs> not a fan of that. Well, they, they like it. They like it. They'll, they'll come back. Oh, they, will. They, they were just surprised. <laughs> come here, pigs. Oh, you know you love that. Yeah. It's like a water theme park right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If I was a pig, this is the life I'd want to live. That's right. Man. That's exactly right. Uh, look at that. Yeah. <laughs> Pigs and water. So this is your dry season, right? Yeah. Obviously, yeah. summertime. Mm -hmm. 
Um, are, is it a drier than normal year? Or uh, yeah, this has been a, just a really nice average year. It hasn't been too wet, hasn't been too dry. Mm -hmm. We've had timely rains along just about the time you think, oh man, it's it's going to really get dry, then we get a rain. So your ponds are doing okay then as far as... Ponds are doing cool? okay. We, okay. We, ha we have been irrigating yep. uh, for the last couple weeks, so we're drawing them down. But uh, we got a nice big rain last evening a shower and uh so it's been a it's been a good time i'll show you the coolest tool coolest tool ever man <laughs> an electric chainsaw <laughs> that just came down in a storm the other day. And boy, there is nothing like an electric chainsaw to carry with you. Sure. What's that? Oh, there's another one. Oh, if I cut that off, it's going to fall. All right. Well, we'll just... Oh, that under the a small one underneath it, right there. It's like a little shelf. All right. Well, we'll just. There you go. Timber. There we go. <laughs> What's that? A 12 inch or 14 inch? Uh... 12 inch. Yeah, 12 inch. That's cool. But man, Real what cool. a wonderful little tool you know yeah i carry it with me and when i run into stuff like that you don't have to start up with, <laughs> you don't have to have your big one and i, I wouldn't want to cut all my firewood with that thing <laughs> no. but but for this kind of thing you know pruning like yep. pruning pruning orchard trees sure climb up the ladder and hit the button yep they, these are acorn glens here you can see the electric fence from the one from tree to tree yep so here what we've done is we've we've simply taken out the junk and left the good the good trees mm -hmm. and created that um um that widely spaced oak trees which then which then um drop way more acorns because they have more room yep so we call that weeding weeding the woodlot right. sure just, just like you weed your green bean patch mm -hmm. we weed the woodlot And the pigs come in here, right, Joel? Yeah, once a year. So once the, a year. the pig pastures, they go through about three times a year. Mm -hmm. But the but the acorn glens, they just come to in the fall and and uh, eat the acorns. The the pig pasture actually does not does not reduce the feed the feed that the pigs eat mm -hmm. um, because grass grass doesn't except in herbivore grass grass is not uh not starch sure so it's not like, like, like you're not going to get fat eaten salad sure sure yeah okay? <laughs> but but if you want minerals and vitamins and and fiber and all that you, you want to eat salad sure sure all right so, and so, so the same thing with the pigs we don't actually we don't actually save grain by pasturing them mm -hmm. what we do is we make the pork um uh, nutritious yes so the meat is actually not white it's rose colored yes which which the color indicates iron and carotenes and, and all that mm -hmm. and uh and then of course the exercise makes the meat very moist mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then the the happy the happy environment makes them stress-free yes. so one of the things we've learned over the many years especially from our chefs is um that all of our stuff poultry beef pork 
cooks 20% faster sure. than what's in the store. Sure. Because what's in the store is under so much stress, mm -hmm. it spends a whole lifetime secreting adrenalines mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. tightening up its tightening up its uh, its tissue, mm -hmm. whereas ours are you know happy and <laughs> happy and happy go lucky. Well, and not to mention the taste. Like, yeah. I can't even yeah. eat the other stuff. Right. You know. Right. Right. Wow. So right now, this is the pond that the cow that's that the cow water is coming from. Mm -hmm. So we're a mile away. We're a mile away, and there's buried water line that goes, you know, all the way down. Mm -hmm. And the best water in a pond comes from 16, inch, 16 inches under the surface. So that that floaty out there yep. is holding up the intake strainer. Mm -hmm. And on the bottom of the intake strainer is a little piece of metal. Mm -hmm. um, and so between so so the, the the metal on the bottom and the floaty on the top keeps that strainer at 16, 16 inches, inches as the pond as the pond fluctuates, sure. it, it continues to pull the water off 16 inches. Mm -hmm. If you pull water off the top, you get a lot of fly legs and you know wings and twigs and leaves. Sure. If you pull it off the bottom, it's kind of funky and anaerobic. Yep. So uh, so 16 inches is the best, and so that that's what that is. So that water then that's coming down through the bottom of the the and you can see it's down you know two three feet. Sure. Uh, we're in you know we're in mid August. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's supposed to be. Yeah. Now, how far do you have to dig your pipe down to get below a frost line here? Like, you don't have much of a frost line, do you? Or? Uh, we well, we 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 try to go, uh, you know, eighteen to twenty-four inches. Oh, you do? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Sure. So we put we put our lines in with a subsoiler, yep. just on a three-point hitch on a tractor, just a subsoiler, mm -hmm. and uh, and 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 bury the bury the line. You can bury a mile of line a day. It, it's mm -hmm. it's it's not it's not bad. Not too bad. Okay. Yeah. And of course, you know, uh, so so the you know, the soapbox that I get on here is generally when you people say we need water, the first thing they think is let's dig a well. Mm -hmm. Yes, but, that's the first thing I think of. Yeah, but 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 the, but the problem with a well is that now you're depleting the commons because uh, it, you know, if everybody sticks a straw in in the aquifer, yep. then you don't have an aquifer. Sure. Or if everybody drinks six sticks a straw in a spring or a creek or whatever, then you don't have a spring or a creek. And so we believe one of our mandates is to actually, as a result of our stewardship, is to increase the commons, mm -hmm. the, the commons, soil, air, water. I mean, this is the stuff that we all share mm -hmm. eat and need, need to survive. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and so the beauty of a pond is, and again, this is not a spring, it's not a stream, this is mm -hmm. just winter runoff. So this is this is snow melt from, mm -hmm. you know, January or, or, or you know, a, a heavy rain or whatever. So um, so the, the beauty of a, of a pond is if you if you put it in a place that where it's only going to collect surface runoff, by definition, surface runoff means the, the, the cup of the commons is full. Sure. It, it, it can't take anymore. Yes. All right. Yes. And so it's, it's, it's running off. And um, and so. So the pond then becomes a blessing to people downstream who would get flooded out in a in a in a big rain. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, it becomes a blessing in a drought because you're adding hydration and riparian mm -hmm. area mm -hmm. to the to the system yeah and you're not leveraging the aquifers deep below that's the right surface. that's yeah. right well that makes total sense and you yeah. see that happen when they build like call the sex and stuff where they put in 50 or 100 houses and they all drill down and they're all in the same aquifer yep. and then over time they have water issues yep. and yep. starts to starts to go down starts yeah to go down so um so the beauty one of the beauties of this is as opposed to a well, you know, wells sometimes can get poisoned. Mm -hmm. uh, they can go dry. Mm -hmm. uh, stuff's going on down there here any day, any day. I can drive up here and say, oh, I've still got 200,000 gallons of water. I, you know, I can I can see it. I can I can go yes. look at that inventory. Yes. And um, and to me, it's it's way better than money in a bank. Uh, I, I to, couldn't to, to have the, to have the water um, the water accessible. Well, we have some uh, local farms up our way that uh, their drilled wells have gone dry, mm -hmm. and yep. that is panic mode. Absolutely, no ponds. Um, they've got all these you know horses, livestock, whatever, and no water. Now they're bringing it in on the back of a truck to pump it out, and they're panicking. Yeah, and they yeah. should be right. Yeah. No water, absolutely. But yeah. they got to. They should be looking into this. Yeah. I'm yeah. fascinated at that these aren't spring fed. That is something that I I thought for years that it had to be. These are storage tanks. Yeah, they're just they're just an earthen it's sure. just an earthen storage tank. Yep. Yeah. 
And, you know, even in, even in dry area, and I'm sure you've got, you know, you've got listeners that are in dry areas, you know, Nevada, Utah, whatever. Mm -hmm. And, and just remember that even in a dry area, let, let's say you live in a, in a really dry area, six inches of rain a year, mm -hmm. you know, really dry. Well, what's a third of six is two. So, you know, this idea of, of a third of all raindrops come, uh, I mean, I can tell you, even in Arizona, Nevada, mm -hmm. there are a couple of days a year where water's everywhere, right? I mean, it's running across the road, the arroyos, you know, you, mm -hmm. you go to New Mexico and every mile or so you're crossing these big dry, you know, they run, they run, uh, um, you know, sand, uh, sand buggies, you know, uh, dune the, buggies the dune down buggies, through, yeah. but mm -hmm. there are a few days a year when those things are gully full, sure. right? With, with water. Yep. And so, uh, so even, even at a six inch rainfall area, two inches a year times 30,000 gallons is 60,000 gallons per acre. So just five acres is 300,000 gallons. Just dig ponds. This pond is about a 300,000 gallon pond, just to give you a perspective of, of you know, uh, scale. Unreal. And, 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 and that's, in, that's in Arizona. Sure. You know, now, do you think, though, that in an area like that, the the pond it wouldn't perk extensively down. You mean like, le leach out or leach, leach out? out? Yeah. Um, uh, generally not. Okay. Generally not. No, it, it it they hold they hold pretty well. Now, sure. If it if it does leach out, if if you if you can't get it uh, really fixed impervious, then you put pigs in it. We've had ponds leak, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, you put pigs in it. Um, put corn around. Put pigs in for two weeks. Never leaks another ounce ever. Uh, we, we call them squealer sealers. <laughs> it, you know, yeah, yeah. I've never they, heard of that. They, they patch it. You know, pigs. They, I mean, I mean, they can make sand hold water. Sure. I mean, you know, they're unbelievable. And and if you look here, like you can see that that red dirt over there, then yep. it gets whiter. And all right, so the red is what's impermeable. Mm -hmm. So what you what we do is we we make the dam out of the red, and then you take the other stuff and you use it to just hold up the hold up the the impermeable you know, mm -hmm. clay in the front. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's, there, there's an art to this. There's an art and a science to this, mm -hmm. but, but, but it's not, you know, it's not rocket science. It's, sure. This it's, it's, it's fairly, you know, fairly straightforward. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and, you know, if, if, if we would, if we would put our attention on this to hydrate the landscape all over the place, look, if all the soil that had been moved since the Europeans came here to the Shenandoah Valley. If all the soil that's been moved to plant corn to feed cows that shouldn't have corn anyway, had been used instead to move to strategic soil in valleys in these mountains to build ponds. Mm -hmm. Today, the Shenandoah Valley would be drought proof and flood proof. We would have recreated Eden. You're absolutely right. But absolutely but but right. instead instead what we do is we plow we 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 send our soil down the stream yep. and we burn out the organic matter. And then we have droughts, and then we ask for federal assistance because absolutely <laughs> all all when it can be solved yeah, with digging all, more of these all could, could be solved. How many this. ponds do you have here? Uh, I and think you're... we have about fifteen, but we just keep building them. <laughs> yeah. We just every time we get a little bit of money, we build them. We built one two weeks ago, built another one. Yeah. Um, we don't always build one a year. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we build a couple in a year, mm -hmm. but we you know we we, um, we we build them routinely. Sure. I mean, we even build them on you know on a leased property, rental mm -hmm. property. Mm -hmm. um, because I mean, there's something special about being able to. We got water, you yeah, know. For sure. Um, hey, Piggles. How are you, Piggles? So this has been a pig pasture for 30 years. Mm -hmm. You can see the berm mm -hmm. that they've built up here. Come on, pigs. Hi. So this was this was forest, just like that. Mm -hmm. We came in, we cut it down. Never planted a seed. We just started running the pigs through, and this grass just was in the latent seed bank and just grew up. Unbelievable. So, so um, this, this, um, so that is the paddock they were just in, mm -hmm. and they've now they've moved over here, and then you know when they finish here they'll they'll go over here, and um, again we never planted a seed. It just uh, with the proper with the proper disturbance. So if you over disturb, you get weeds. Mm -hmm. If you under disturb, you get uh, you get brambles and, and brush. And so there's a real there's a real uh, special window of mm -hmm. disturbance to um, you know to, to to freeze your to freeze your ecology where you want it. 
Sure. And the seed bank is unbelievable. These seeds will stay in the will stay dormant for centuries, centuries until the conditions are right to uh, you know to germinate. Unbe I cannot believe that you didn't seed this. No, no. Then ne never plant, never seeded anything. <laughs> Eight panels. Amazing. You look like they're happy. Absolutely. They eat a lot of grass. People don't realize how much grass they'll eat, but they'll... In the same time they, frame they, here they'll as, eat quite as a bit. the yeah. other paddock. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. hmm. Although what happens is as the pigs get bigger and eat more feed, they move faster. Sure. That's why five to 12 sure. days. Yep. Yeah, that, yeah, that makes total sense because the other ones in the other paddock were much smaller. Much smaller. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So they're there longer, but, but the actual impact is the same. Sure. In other words, th uh, 40, 40... 100 pound pigs for 10 days <laughs> is the same impact as 40 200 pound pigs for five days. Sure. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Same result, different uh -huh. time yeah. frame. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They had to take a while to learn that on your end. I know you teach that now oh, in your yeah. seminars and stuff. So for people like me, it's like, <laughs> I, it's a shortcut, but that had to be. Uh, quite a process. Oh yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like well, a tremendous amount of observing and note taking. Yeah. So, so like I said, this we we've, we've been at this pasture now for thirty years, mm -hmm. and um, and so we made every mistake. We we over disturbed, under disturbed. Mm -hmm. uh, we made all sorts of mistakes. Now, now we 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 get to this place much quicker sure. than we did making the mistakes we did earlier. Mm -hmm. But um, but the, the the key, I mean. But what we learned was that this grass would come. We didn't think, we didn't know that grass would come. So we thought we were going to have to seed or plant barley or, you know, I had these idea of planting, you know, the Three Sisters Garden, you know, uh, uh, zucchinis um, and and um, corn and uh, Kentucky Wonder Beans mm -hmm. and all that. You know, we, we, we did all sorts of things. And, and just lo and behold, here is this grass just started growing. <laughs> so we'll forget, you know, sure. forget all this uh, nonsense. Let's just, let's just enjoy it. And so that, that's exactly what happened. Yeah. God creates this. Yeah. Right? He, it's, it's yeah. here. Yeah. What needs to be here is here. Yeah, that's right. Huh. That's right. <laughs> it's mesmerizing, isn't it? It, it truly is. <laughs> and you know, it's funny because sometimes you hear people say like pigs are mean and they're escape artists and like this. You've got it pretty well down. Here yeah. we are yeah. sitting in with these yeah. big guys. <laughs> yeah. They seem friendly and as content yeah. as humanly oh, yeah. possible. Yeah. They're not running off. You've got yeah. a, you know, a one foot high yeah. two strand fence uh -huh. yeah. and you've got squared away yeah like yeah huh yeah look at look at that booger eating eating grass over there just eating it chowing it's down like an ice cream cone yeah <laughs> uh-huh yeah like an ice cream cone yeah just chowing down wow huh so this is next up here uh-huh yep that'll be the next one mm -hmm. wow so if people have property that are watching this and they don't think it's it can be utilized for much, uh, you have other advice. You just hit the you just hit the nail on the head. I was yeah. just kind of waiting for the segue to say, you know, th this is this is marginal land here. I mean, we're up here in a mountain. Mm -hmm. It's rocky. You can see the rocks. I mean, it's 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 not real fertile. It's not it's marginal land. We're turning ten thousand dollars an acre. Yep. Ten thousand. That's gross. Mm -hmm. But ten thousand an acre. You know, a net. Of 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 uh, you know uh, twenty five hundred to three thousand mm -hmm. an acre an net acre. an acre and this is this is totally marginal. Yeah, this reminds me exactly up near Central New York. Um, and a lot of people you hear say 
you know, oh, the land's not good for anything. It's raw land, this and that. Um, mm -hmm. I, you're proving that whole thing here wrong. Yeah, and the and other thing is... that I'm, the other thing that, that that is important to realize here is people, you know, they they hear my song and dance and they say, oh, well, that's that's all warm and fuzzy and sweet, but can but but can we re really feed the world this way? I mean, mm -hmm. can can we really do this? And the fact is. How many millions of this marginal acres are there? We talked about that on, on the podcast yeah. a few weeks ago. Yeah, me that's and right. That's right. How many in in New York alone? I think I told you there's 300,000 acres of vacant farmland. Yeah. And yeah. no, mm -hmm. so I don't buy the you can't feed the world. No. Um, no. I heard in one of your other talks where you had mentioned that if we set up farms like Polyphase mm -hmm. on the outsides of cities. Yeah enough of them could easily transport Absolutely. enough food in there to feed them. And I, I wholeheartedly agree Absolutely. with that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Everyone. Everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Can't get enough. It's like an addiction almost. You get, it's like it's better than crack. <laughs> they have their mud hole to stay cool. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. And their watering is yeah, on the same, other side. Same yeah, setup. Same, same setup. kind of water. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Awesome. All right. Are you concerned with um, China, Bill Gates, uh, BlackRock hedge fund <laughs> buying all this farmland in the U.S.? Or do you not think about that much? You know, there's nothing I can do about it. Sure. What's the best thing I can do about it? The best thing I can do about it is two things. Mm -hmm. One, I can get more people farming, mm -hmm. um, farming uh, enjoyably and profitably. So they don't want to sell to anybody for any amount of money. Sure. And number two, I can get non-farmers to patronize mm -hmm. this kind of food. Sure. Those are the two things I can influence. I, I don't have access to Bill Gates. I don't have access yeah. to, you know, any of these people. And so I just, you know, Stephen Covey, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Yeah. He talks about staying within your sphere of influence. Sure. Well, my sphere of influence isn't Bill Gates. Yeah, sure. You know, so I just don't, I, um, it, I just find it draining to yeah. sit here and, and worry about that. Mm -hmm. It is what it is. So mm -hmm. I take, here's my deal. My bottom line is there's a lot of things to be angry and frustrated about. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we wanted to make a list, we could make a, make a list. But the key is to turn all of that angst, <laughs> okay, of, of anger and frustration that's negative and turn it into positive hope and help so that we can offer hope and help when society becomes hopeless and helpless. Yeah. Beautiful, isn't it? It's amazing. Yeah. Good farming should be aesthetically and aromatically sensually romantic. <laughs> I've read that many times. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we have... Um... Up our way, I'm sure you've got them down here too. But a lot of those manure lagoons, yeah. Oh, oh my, my gosh, goodness. yeah. And it's like, yeah, the trucks that go by, the road damage, the smell, yeah. oh, yeah. And yeah, it's unbelievable. You want to talk about everything that goes against what's natural, yeah. Uh -huh. Let's let's catch the cow's shit, yeah, store the shit, transport the shit with diesel, <laughs> spread the shit. And, and then and, we keep and, repeating and, that. And, and put the poop in water. <laughs> yeah. Don't we want to keep it out of the water? Yeah, for no, sure. we're putting it in the water. Yeah. They yeah. they build these concrete holding tanks yeah. that are oh, like yeah. two acres big. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're massive. And they have to build these huge fences so yeah. kids and wildlife yeah. don't drown in these, you know. Oh, deer. Oh, deer. Yeah. Wow. Another one here. And then, and then. They get they get tax subsidies and credits yep. to put a, to put a, a, a rubber bladder over it yeah. and produce the, renewable natural gas yeah. RNG yes. from yes. the methane yep. from the confinement. I mean, it's just, it, it doesn't end. It just gets more <laughs> ludicrous by the minute. 
So we're, we're trying to conceive of something that actually, that actually is a workable, credible food insurance mm -hmm. model. Mm -hmm. And see, the, the, the problem is when COVID came, People like us, you know, we sold we sold a year's worth of we sold six months worth of inventory in six weeks. Mm -hmm. When the store shelves went empty, suddenly the store filled up, boom, you're gone. Well, you know, we have customers who've been with us for 20 years, and suddenly we don't have anything for them when they come. Absolutely. And it's it's a bummer. Sure, sure. And um and and they feel they feel like it's unfair. We 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 feel like it's unfair. Sure. But how do you? But but we don't know when they're going to come. We don't know how much they're going to buy. Yep. So. So you want to sell all you can, but you don't want to sell. Um, but, but you want to sell all you can, but but you'd love to be able to prioritize and hold back for, sure. you know, good loyal people. So how do, so like the people that are asking us about food insurance, how do we get your first class? How do we get on your first class? Mm -hmm. And um, so you're talking about a membership where, like, let's say it's tier one membership. They're, you know, they have to spend 300 a month and they're guaranteed. That way you have a projection yeah. on inventory, revenue, well, here, all here's, of that. Well, here's one of the things that I was thinking, uh, just to show you kind of where my mind is going. Um, I'm thinking, pay us a thousand bucks a year mm -hmm. as a premium and we will guarantee you that we will not sell more of these premiums then we have animals in the field. That's great security. Great. And, and, and that, that's that's our promise. Sure. Oh, okay. So it's a thousand for the food security. Yeah. And then, and, and, and then and they you'll get buy a break the in product. price. Yes. You get a break in price. Sure. Nothing. That's nothing. A that's a great idea. But 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 all we all we guarantee is that that if things go down, yep. we will never we will never sell more than then and, and we'll articulate it you know uh, so many pounds of pork so many pounds mm -hmm. of chicken so many pounds of beef so many dozen eggs whatever that will always be an inventory for the first class i'll tell you what that that's a peace of mind especially when we see that in 48 hours the grocery stores could be empty right right yeah, for right. sure so so this is the tool this is the dolly this is a little tool okay and uh, and when we run when we run Purdue and Cargill out of business, uh, these will be available in every hardware store. And so you just stick the ends under, and you just use yourself as a lever. Now it's on wheels. And then the birds just walk. <laughs> new ground, they just got their bedding changed, a new salad bar. Amazing. It's the same exact setup that we were on and inspired 100% by you. <laughs> Yep. And, and so one person with this little gizmo without starting an engine, no petroleum, one person can move 4,500 chickens every 60 minutes. Wow. I noticed on our lawn, it's amazing. At the end of the summer season, it looks like a UFO landed there. Yeah. Because everywhere that they sleep and they, they poop. Yeah. Essentially, the what is it, nitrogen yeah. that just makes the lawn just explode. Yeah. Now, I'll tell you what, while we're here, I'm going to do something here just to check this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm going to I'm going to check this. Uh, so that that right there is a sight stake mm -hmm. so that so that these shelters don't get either too wide or too narrow. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go step this off and see see where we are here.
Well, folks, and join those uh, joining us on this amazing tour down here. This is uh, the way farming should be. This is what we're advocating for. Um, animals are happy, healthy, the nutrition and the meat is unbelievably high. This is, this is the way of the future. When do you think you implement the uh, insurance or at least beta test it? <laughs> I don't know. We're, st we're still kind of just uh, whatever, you know, wrestling with, mm -hmm. but, but I'm, I'm running the idea by people like you that I mm -hmm. respect that are in the space uh, just to, well, you know, originally I was thinking to even make a cryptocurrency yes. part of it, but I, I'm... Now I'm kind of off of that. Um, well, the crypto market right now, like I, I am an advocate of crypto, uh -huh. um, but man, it's shaky ground. It is shaky ground. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I, I love the decentralized finance piece. I, I uh -huh. like so much about it, but man, I don't know how much I would stake. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I yeah. could be absolutely wrong and I'd be like, oh man, I wish I did more. Yep. 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 But a lot of people have lost a pile of money. I mean, a pile of money. Yes in crypto yes but you know what though I, I really think that you know let's say a thousand a year for food security you know you're paying for for auto insurance yeah homeowners insurance right and 99.999 percent right. of the time you don't use it no but guess what you have it yeah and i don't know <laughs> to pay what's that 80 bucks a month right 80 yeah no yeah yeah what's that yeah about 80, 80 bucks. bucks a month you know, to say, look, in these odd, turbulent times. Basi basically, our, our promise is, if we eat, you eat. Yeah. That's basically the deal. Man, that's cheap and, security. And, you know, and we wouldn't do to more than like 200 families. Sure. You know, that would, that sure. would be it. Sure. That would be it. But it would, it would be a way, it would be a way to, um, you know, to, it, it would be a way to promise something people want. And and it would be a way for us to if if there's a black swan, yep, which we know there's going to be another one. Yeah, it, it enables us then to immediately go to a to a, um, a holding pattern. Sure, absolutely, absolutely. And 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 this premium for however long it's paid mm -hmm. makes it economically and emotionally possible to say no to you because you haven't you haven't been coming sure. out sure. until until suddenly now and now you're in trouble well and think well, about it, if i was a lifelong customer let's even say five-year customer for polyface uh -huh. farms and then you said you sold in six weeks six months six months worth, worth of yeah mm -hmm. i'm gonna feel like crap you know, if I come yeah. and I'm like, well, you're out of all this inventory. Right, right, right. I, you know, I was sort of relying on this yes. as you're my local farmer. Right, right. Um, that would put me, put you in a tough spot. But yeah, if it, they it, were, it, it, it did. There. It does, and it did. Yeah. Because yeah. huh. we felt bad for, you know, for people. Yeah. Um, but again, there's no, the, the problem is, you say, well, yeah, I know you're, you're, you're loyal, but but you know, loyal people drop off every year too, mm -hmm. <laughs> or, or change their buying habits. The kids go to college or get married, and now you know they they drop from a half a beef to a quarter. Yep. Uh, different things, and so there's got to be some sort of of shared mm -hmm. investment. Yep. We're willing to invest in a guarantee, but you have to procure that guarantee by mm -hmm. you know by by uh, by making it possible. For us to do it, I've heard the same uh, idea done with uh, property out in rural areas where uh -huh. they're like called bunker properties. Yeah. Where you pay a, a, a annual fee, and you know, if the zombies came and the yeah. black swan event, you and your family would have access to yeah a part of a 500 acre parcel. Right. It's right. got a creek. It's got woods. Right. right. You could send a tenor and RV up. Yep. Um, yeah, that's a great idea too. Yeah, you know, uh, I, I know people doing that. There's a guy in New Zealand doing it. Okay, uh, absolutely. And 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 what 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 he's doing is he's building little cottages. Sure. And and so you know for for uh, whatever it is you know one hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars, we build you this cottage it has your name on it, 
you can come and stay in it now if you want. You can uh, rent it out if you want. Mm -hmm. um, we're not selling the land under it. This gives you a right to that cottage sure. for $150,000. And that $150,000 then pays for us to build it, the lumber, uh, and helps to finance our farm improvements and water lines and a fencing infrastructure. Sure. Uh, you know, it, it's all it's all a, a so package. It's yeah. a, like a timeshare, but like yeah. a survival timeshare. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, it's a survival timeshare. Yeah. yeah, that's a great concept. Great concept. Well, well before my battery dies here, um, is there anything else you want to share with everyone, Joel? This has been awesome. We're going to be spending the next three days together on and off. Um, this has just been a pleasure. Yeah, it's been a delight to have you, and, and it's just always a, an honor to you know to share what we're doing. Um, we don't have all the answers, but we do we do we we do sure have fun uh, finding answers, mm -hmm. and uh, and we have some, and uh, we're just delighted when folks come and we get to share our story and our our ministry, and um, yeah, it's a it's a it's a fun fun time. And my hope, you know, I was thinking about this driving down here today was, you know, making these videos and, and talking and collaborating with um, with you is to provide hope and inspiration mm -hmm. for people of all ages, whether yeah. it's a backyard garden. Exactly. Um, or, you know, a big professional enterprise. Right. They, I really want people to chase that. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I can guarantee they'll be addicted to it over time. They'll be more resilient. They'll be healthier. Um, and they'll be making the world a better place. Yeah, that's exactly right. It, this is not about scale. It's about participation. And we need to, whatever, whatever, part we can participate in uh, whether it's you know uh, being a, a patron a patron saint for a good farmer yep. or whether it's being a good farmer uh, for your urban friend urban mm -hmm. people um, there, there's a there's a place for every single person to participate 